Welcome to HDTV. You're not rocking with your boy. Merry Christmas to all. And hope everyone is having a safe um, Christmas. And I appreciate the support. We're at 200 subscribers, man. I mean, wow, that's amazing. To me, it's so amazing how far we've come with the content. Um, when we do our, our stream yards, I appreciate everybody for coming through. And um, I just thank, thank everyone for um, just being there. Now, now basically, the San Antonio Spurs look very good. And I think a lot of times we forget how great Greg Popovich is. You know, we, we kind of take his greatness for granted. But, um... The things that I loved about what I saw was um the backcourt they have. Lonnie Walker the fourth, and then you got um DeJounte Murray. Now DeJounte Murray, if he stays healthy the whole year, the Spurs could be a dangerous team and, and they could probably get in to the playoff. It's gonna be tough, but they look good. Excuse me. Um, they look good. They play good defense. Um, they did their job moving the ball. Guys were doing their job. The supporting cast was balling out. DeRozan had a big game, but you know this is DeRozan. You know he'll do good in the regular season. It's when the playoffs come that he gets scared. Now. Looking at Memphis and um, looking at um, Dallas, Luka, and then Ja Morant, my thing is this. I believe Ja Morant is long-term going to be a better player than um, Luka Doncic. To me, he has better control of the offense than Luka he also can defend at a higher level than Luka, and he just has that dog and that nastiness to him. Where Luka, you know, he, he's great, but at times Luka, sometimes he'll get caught up with the refs, and then not only that, he's barely able to keep his balance. He tripped over his own foot and um, hurt his ankle. Well, he hurt his ankle early in the game when he fell. But it's just that it kept lingering. Excuse me, it kept lingering. So to me, I, I like John Moran in the long term better than Luca. Now, this isn't to say Luca's a bad player. You know, Luca to me could he has the potential to be probably one of the greatest players to ever touch the basketball court. But some of the things that I just didn't like was the, the three-pointers and uh, settling too much for bad shots. Um, Dallas Dallas really should have um, been blown out. But because of the supporting cast, like Josh Richardson, Dorian Feeney, Tim Hardaway, I, I told you. And then they still got Burke and they got Brunson. Burke and Brunson are very key off the bench um, when they come in. And it was a great thing they did. They were moving the ball around. Everybody was getting involved. Um, Luca hit some shots. Um, to me, Luca's better going to the basket or fadeaway or posting or, you know, he's a much better guy. He, to me, his three pointer is very terrible to me, and, I, and he takes too many threes at times. Sometimes it's like, look, man, like West, like Westbrook did. Yes, like he did. Um, I think yesterday, the day before. Westbrook basically just said, I'm done shooting threes. He only made, uh, he didn't make, he shot twice. And made none. But um, the Spurs look good. Um, I just don't trust DeRozan and um, Aldridge. I would still try to 
move those two guys and just get some picks and get some players because you're not going to the um, championship this year. So to me, it's no point in keeping them. It's just a waste of space. Now, to me, the Mavericks don't need Porzingis. They don't. To me, I would try... When he comes back, I would play him for a little bit and get his value up, and I would try to move him. He's injured prone. He's going to forever be injured prone. He's going to forever get hurt and things like that. It's like, man, what else can you do? Now, the Phoenix Suns look good. Um... The Phoenix Suns look good because of their supporting cast. Um, you had number 25. I think that's Mikael Michael Bridges or Mikael Bridges. I don't know how you say his name. He's good. He hit some shots and also on the defensive end, his length. I like Monty Williams' game plan when he had him basically picking um, Luka up full court, which is what you got to do. When you watch how to guard LeBron James, it's the same thing with guarding Luka. Only difference is Luka's a better, you know, he has more skill and a better player than LeBron. But you got to think about it. If you pick these guys up from full court, they, they don't know how to function. And this is the thing I don't understand when people play LeBron, they just let him bring the ball up court, all non-pressure. But when you pressure him, he turns into a basket case. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the Suns, they have some guys. Um, I like that guy. I like that number two. He's pretty good. Um, Aiden is looking phenomenal. He's going to be that big. He just has to learn how to stay out of foul trouble. Chris Paul and Devin Booker are going to be a, a, a tough backcourt to score on or even attempt to beat. They are very tough. Um, and then Chris Paul brings that toughness. He brings that leadership that OKC had. And But, you know, like I said, it's a long season. It's a long season. You know, things can happen. Now... The Suns defensively was better. Um, they they did a lot of things I love. Um, picking Luka up full court. Um, boxing out. They were boxing out a lot. I like the Powell kid um, for Dallas because he was he was getting in the lane doing what he did. But but um but um with Phoenix man, I done went over there to um them to um Dallas. But with Phoenix, I like how. I like how they um they were tough the whole game. And then Cameron Payne. Cameron Payne, I think it's Cameron Payne or whatever. He used to be Westbrook's um dance partner. Um he looked good out there being the backup point guard coming in, making some plays, hitting some big threes, um, setting up the offense. So I mean the Suns team is good. It's just that are they gonna sustain? Is Chris Paul going to play the whole year? Because if Chris Paul get hurt, is this Suns team still going to be good? I believe they are. So that's the biggest question marks is Chris Paul's health. And, of course, um, you know, their bench continue to come in and do what they do, making shots like that, then they'll be tough to beat. Now, the Mavericks, like I was saying, um, Luka just has to, Luka to me has to learn how to play a little better off the ball. But when he went to the bench, Brunson and Trey Burke were matchup nightmares, and they were keeping the Mavericks in the game. They were making some good shots, making some great decisions. Now, um... Trying to think. Yeah. But um the Spurs, man, they, they're gonna be a tough team. But Dallas, excuse me, I'm going too far. I'm all over the place. Sorry about that. Um Dallas is gonna have to um Luke is gonna have to learn how to play off the ball. He has to learn some things. And um 
to me, they'll be fine. They got a good supporting cast. Dallas, I told you, is going to be my fourth or fifth seed. They didn't look like it last. They didn't look like it yesterday, but shoot. It is what it is, man. Things happen. And you got to understand, you know, they, they just getting back from, you know, having to go through the bubble. <laughs> but Luka this year has to work on his decision making. Cut down the threes and go for your twos. Go for the, the mid-range game and the post game is a lost arc in basketball. You know, and, and that's the reason why. You know, basketball has got so poorish with its play because everybody wants to shoot a damn three. A three is not a great way to help your team a lot. Sometimes, you know, when sometimes when you um do that, you know, sometimes when you do that, it is that it hurts your team. And in Dallas, for some reason, like like I said, um, Dallas, they'll be fine. I believe they'll get there. But Luka has to go more into the post and shoot the mid-range as well as, you know, post up. Do what he has to do. That's a lost art because guys want to shoot these dumb jumpers. And it's stupid to me. But, um... I think John ja Moran in the long term is going to be a better player than Luka Doncic. I believe he is. I believe he's a little more tougher than Luka. And I believe defensively, Ja is a way better defender. And to me, controlling the offense, I think Ja is a little better. And he's very tough. So that's how I look at it. But um, but Memphis, I... I just don't like their team. When they got rid of those guys last year, I think that really hurt their team. They basically need another guy off the bench who can score, and they need another guy who can facilitate. John Moran is burning himself out. If John Moran continues playing like this, he's going to burn himself out. <laughs> so they need to find a way to get him some help, get him some pieces over there. Because Memphis could be a dangerous team. Him and Dylan Brooks are a very good backcourt. A very young one, but they're very good. Dylan Brooks, I like Dylan Brooks' toughness. I like, you know, he's ready to fight all the time, and that's what you need. So, to, to me, that's what I took from those games and everything. Um, so, all I can say is, man, um... It's going to be a long season. I just hope the defenses stay how they are where guys are actually playing defense. But um, let me know, man, in the comment section, who would you take? Ja Morant or Luka Doncic? To me, I would take Ja Morant. Maybe I'm biased because I've liked, loved him since he was in college. But I would take Ja Morant. I believe Ja Morant is a better player, more far superior player than Luka. But um, Luke is going to get more publicity because he's of the pink colorization. So um, thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming content. And if you want to donate to the page, you can cash at me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDII TV. Thank you for listening. We're out. Live, boy.